Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL tutorial with Learn at NoStar. Today we are going to talk about dynamic SQL. Dynamic SQL is when a SQL query is generated and executed at runtime. The advantage of dynamic SQL over static SQL is that you can parameterize the SQL query statement and you can pass the different parameter values. Maybe you can take an input from a third party system and then the same query can be executed again and again. So the same piece of code can be reutilized with different parameter values values. So let's go a little deeper into dynamic SQL and see how a dynamic SQL statement can be prepared, what code needs to be written for that, what are the various ways to execute a dynamic SQL and what are some of the disadvantages associated with dynamic SQL. So suppose we have to run a simple select query on the employees table, we would write a query like this, select star from dbo.employees. Now let's say that we want to convert this into a dynamic SQL. We want to first of all add some parameters to this query. So let's say I want to say where full name like o star. So this is a query which has a where clause in it. So I have parameterized this query. If I run this query, I get this result. Maybe I want to run this query multiple times and now I want to check for the full name where the full name uh, starts with let's say A. So you have one output coming from when the full name starts with A. Now if I'm writing a piece of code and I'm passing the parameter value in a variable, then I need to run, I, I'm just going to write the code once and I'm going to call the SQL statement in that code once and keep on passing the different parameter values as and when the SQL statement needs to be executed. So for that, for converting this into a dynamic query, first let's define a parameter. So I'm just going to define a variable here and that can be like let's just call it a variable because we would be changing different uh, parameters in this query and for because the full name is a string character let's define it and we're just passing the first character so let's de still define it as yca 30 you can define it as per your requirements and then let's let's assume that we're passing the value to this parameter through some external user application for now let's just put the value of a in it so the first step is that you have a parameter which collects the value. Now in the second step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this SQL query. I'm going to create the select statement dynamically. So for that, I'm going to declare a string first. So I'm going to say declare add SQL and I'm going to define a data type for this. And this could be a big string. So I'm going to say, let's say 500 characters for this is equal to and now I'm just going to concatenate the different components different subparts of the select query into a single query so the first subpart since we are concatenating we're treating all the subparts as string parts so the first part that I want and is always going to be the same in my case is select star from dbo.employees even the where statement is going to be the same so I'm just going to put where full name like and now this is the part that is going to change in my query so it could be a it could be it could be anything right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to close my quotes here because this is the first part of the query then i'm going to put a concatenation sign which is plus in sql server i'm going to give it some space so i can add the space here itself and then this is going to be my parameter a value which is coming from at where. So I'm just going to say at where here, which is going to pass it and a value of A. And then I'm going to concatenate it again with the person sign that I had because it's a like statement. So we need to concatenate it with the person sign that we have over here. So this is going to be my statement that I'm going to execute now. This is my SQL uh, query that I have built. So if I just do a print at SQL, I should be able to see the SQL query as we had written earlier. So if I just do this, 
this is the SQL query that I see. Select star from review.employees where full name like a person. So this is what I wanted. Now if you see in this query that has been generated, there are no quotes mark over here. So I'm just going to increase uh, to let's say 200% and this might be clear to you. So if you see it here, select star from dbo.employees where full name like a person. But it is a string, right? It is a string. So it has not generated the quotes that we usually associate when we uh, write their full name like quotes a person. So still let's execute this query and see what if you're getting any error message. So let's go back to 120. Okay. So now how do we execute this query? This print statement printed the SQL query. I want to execute this query. So the first very simple way to execute this query is to use the keyword execute. Okay. So that's a very simple way. You can just execute writing execute at SQL. So I'm just going to select all this part and trying to execute this query. So it is going to say that there's incorrect syntax near the person sign. So here you see that the quotes have not been added to the A person. So to add the quotes, you have to actually explicitly go and type the quotes. So what you need to do, you need a quote before A and after the person sign. So I'm just going to modify this statement here. I'm going to add a quote sign, a single quote sign. Now, if I just add a single quote sign like this, this is not going to work because again, quote is a reserve character. So you have to escape the quote sign. To escape the quote, you you need an escape character the escape character to escape the code is a code itself so if you just type code single code two times it will escape a single code now i i'm just going to print this to just show you what's happening right here so if you see here you will see that there's a code in the beginning now now you need a code at the end as well so after the person sign also you need a code so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add double quotes right here as well and it should be giving me a quote sign at the end also so you can see that now i've got the quote sign at the end as well now if we don't do this um, i'm going to try another way to achieve the same so what i'm going to do is in the variable itself i'm going to add one more uh, quote statement here one more quote mark here and i'm going to escape the quotes and now I'm going to see if this is going to work I'm just going to select this all and try to execute and this is going to work but this is not work in the way that we want it so I'm again going to increase this and you'll see what has happened is that there has been a quote sign in front of A and after A but we actually wanted it after the person sign so we have a different requirement here because we are using the like keyword here if in place of this maybe if I add the person sign here as well then I should be getting my same so if I add the person sign here and I remove the person sign from here then what I would be getting in the out then you would see that I've got the correct result here so if you want to execute this, you have to add these single quotes to uh, the parameter that you are passing. So maybe when you're passing, you're not adding, you cannot add those double quotes, then you have to create another variable, a derived variable, which would be adding these quotes to the parameter value. So you can see that this was a little tedious, but this is one of the ways in which you can execute. So I, if you just put the execute command here now, and if you execute this query, then you would be getting your results and you can change this value. So instead of A now, if you change, if you have the value that you're passing to the parameter is O, the same SQL statement is going to work in different cases. So you can put all this piece of code in a stored procedure and then just call that stored procedure uh, with different parameter values and the same stored procedure can be executed in multiple instances uh, passing with different parameter values so that is the advantage of creating a dynamic SQL the next approach is a little bit easier on the quotation mark so we do not really have to worry about enclosing the variable value in multiple quotes it also provides us many more options as we'll soon see so in this first of all when you are constructing your SQL statement I can simply instead of concatenating the variable value I can just use the variable value uh, directly in my SQL statement now what I'm going to use 
is I'm going to use a stored procedure from SQL Server to execute this dynamic SQL. So the stored procedure is called SP execute SQL. I'm going to use the execute word before executing this stored procedure. The values that you need to pass to this execute SQL, the stored procedure are the very first is a SQL statement. So add SQL contains the SQL statement value. So that is what I'm going to pass to it. The second value that you need to pass is your parameter list. Now, one thing to keep in mind when using the stored procedure is that it expects Unicode values, which means that you have to concatenate simply the values with a N code and that will convert it into Unicode. So whatever arguments you're passing to the stored procedure have to be Unicode values. Otherwise, it will not work. So the second parameter to be passed is the parameter list. So whatever parameters you are calling in your query, in a query at the present moment, we are calling only one parameter, which is at where. So you have to define that variable over here. Now, this is the parameter definition, param parameter list definition. So we are going to find this again as an, an where cap 100 value. Now, since we are supposed to pass Unicode values, you have to put an N here and a quote here. This makes sure that you're passing the Unicode values. So we have to put the uh, closing uh, bracket and then we have to just put all this value inside the quotes and just start this list with an N over here. Now, this is just the parameter list names. The, sec the third parameter that you pass, the third argument that you pass to this is the parameter list values. So whatever parameters you are calling in your query, what are the values to be passed to that? So the parameter that you're calling in your query is at where and what value do you need to pass to this is from this variable. So what you need to do in this case is simply say at where is equal to at where. Okay. So this should be enough to execute a dynamic SQL. So I'm just going to select all the code that I've written over here and do an execute. Now I got a mistake. I got a error message, column parameter or variable. One cannot find data type and var care. So it's just okay. So let's just correct this. Uh, definition over here again select it and execute it and you will get the correct result over here so this has multiple uh, options that can be passed to it multiple arguments that can be passed it that makes it a stronger alternative to using simply an execute statement now these are the input variables that we pass to this uh, particular short procedure for executing the dynamic sql it also has the option of collecting an output value so instead of saying let's say select star from dbo.employees maybe i want to select the full name itself from this table wherever the full name starts with this so i want to uh, select that full name value step one is going to be declaring another variable so i'm going to declare another variable and that is going to be let's say fn and let's declare it as varchar 200 again and now when you write this we are going to say select full name or select at fn equal to full name so that is your first step so you will collect the value of full name in a variable called fn now we have to add this variable to this parameter list over here so to do that I just go inside, give a comma, and add that variable. So the variable is add fn, define the data type. So let's say I get 200 and define it as an output variable. So if you do not define it, by default, it is an input variable, considered to be an input variable. To define an output variable explicitly, you have to write the output word. And then you have to add it to your parameter values as well. So here are our values. I'm just going to add at fn is equal to at fn and again define it as an output variable. Now to just see what value gets collected here, I'm going to 
add a select statement that is just select at fn so now just let's select everything over here and execute it and you will see that you have got the output collected in your column so we can say add fn as full name again and if you select everything right over here you will get the output as well so this makes it quite powerful because it has the ability to uh, collect values from input arguments as well as pass values to the output variables as well so this can be more customized when you're generating a dynamic code calling it true stored procedure and so on it also has the advantage that because this is a stored procedure provided by sql server itself so it kind of stores the execution plan in the cache so when you are executing the same query with different parameter values then it might be a little bit faster because the execution plan is already stored in the cache so there's sometimes a potential risk associated with dynamic sql and that is called a sql injection sql injection is when somebody with a malicious intent injects a part of sql code into your parameter value so that the database can be tempered with so maybe it is to delete some data in the table maybe to update the data in the database or maybe to provide access to some unauthorized users so for example this is uh, again of the very simple state example that we took in uh, the beginning with the execute the exec uh, keyword so here in the parameter value we are passing zero percent now let's say what i am going to do is i'm going to add a statement called drop table dynamic test so this is a table that i have created just for the testing purpose so you can see that there's a table created over here if we do a select statement here you'll see that there's a table but though there's no data in this table so it's an empty table now if i just do a print at sql for this the SQL statement that's going to get generated is going to look something like this. So you'll see that the SQL statement that has been generated is something like this. Select uh, fn equal to full name from employees, where full name like o percent drop table dynamic test. So uh, going back to our query, uh, let's first remove this from here okay now you can see that the drop table part has been appended to your query so now if we go and execute this query you're going to get your output that's okay but now if we go back and check this table you're going to get an error statement saying invalid invalid object name dynamic test because that table has been dropped because of this statement that got appended to this so somebody who's trying to temper with your database those kind of people can sometimes pass these parameter values these kind of parameter values that can cause an impact a negative impact to your database so this is one risk there are various measures that can be taken to avoid sql injection there are various best practices that can be followed this is just to make you aware of the sql injection what it is and how it can be a part of the dynamic sql that you are writing we'll do a very detailed video on sql injection later and what measures can be taken to avoid sql injection so i hope that this video was useful and it helped us to understand writing the dynamic sql code a little bit better if the video was useful then please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel also like comment share this video we'll be posting many more videos soon